Now the first thing to say about using inline assembly in Visual Studio is that strictly speaking, you may not even need to. Visual Studio has this notion of intrinsics, which are basically wrappers around assembly, and they provide a function-like representation. So instead of needing to write the repstos or repmoves assembly instruction, you can use these underscore underscore stos, and then there's going to be a size like 32. And that will behind the scenes generate a repstos. And you know, you'll give it some addresses of locations that you want to you know, store to string. You can see a list of the Visual Studio intrinsics at this link, which will be put down below the video. But most of these end up being more relevant to Architecture 2001. Basically, they're there to help you know, the Microsoft uh, kernel team interact with control registers and things like that. People interact with model-specific registers and a bunch of other stuff you'll learn about in Architecture 2001. In general, they don't tend to have intrinsics for the super simple assembly instructions that we learn about in this class, the things like add, subtract, etc., because you don't need intrinsics for that. You just use adds and subtracts in your C code. Now, as previously mentioned, Visual Studio does support inline assembly for 32-bit code, but not for 64-bit code. So instead, for our purposes, you're going to have to write code in a MASM file, Microsoft Assembler, using its particular syntax. It goes into a .asm file, and it needs to have something like an exported function name that then can be called from within the C code. So the C code just treats it as some external undefined function, and then the linker links it all together and, and makes it so that the C code can call the assembly code. We will have a quick example of how to create a new project that has MASM support, just so that you can see the one little tweak that it takes to make that work. But if you want to skip that, you can pretty much just use the Scratchpad ASM project within the Visual Studio solution, which was provided. Now, I said before that writing raw bytes can be useful as a way to confirm your understanding once you've read the fun manuals. And so the way that you do that in MASM syntax is you write DB for data byte, and then XX and H for hex. So DB04H followed by DB01H, or you can just put commas in between them. So a single line, DB04H comma 01H. Now, if you were to put this into your assembly file, it would just get stuck into the assembly stream like anything else. And when the CPU eventually comes along and interprets that, it would say, Okay, I see the number four. That is the opcode for an add assembly instruction. And I'm going to expect that there's going to be a one byte immediate value followed. And I will treat that immediate value as something that is to be added to the AL register. One quick thing to help you avoid some headaches is that MASM doesn't like immediates that start with an alphabetical character, even if it, you're telling it that it's hex. So you can't do something like move RAX E blah, 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 like a sort of mentioned offhandedly quite a while ago in the class. Instead, you need to prefix that with a zero. And once you do that, then it's all good. And the same thing applies if you're outputting raw bytes. You can't just do dbc3. You have to do db0c3, and then it interprets it and compiles it fine.